The next speaker is Marcel de Cruyff, and they're going to discuss uh, novel approaches detecting MAP from the bovine fecal environment. Oh, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers as well for, for inviting me to, to speak. So, like a small introduction um, about the uh, about the topic. So, it's a map. It's a um, it's a slow-growing organism. It's an acid fast. It's a gram-positive bacterium, and as you all know, it causes uh, severe economic um, losses to the dairy industry worldwide. And the actual detection um, is actually done on, sol on solid media, and currently it's the, it's the gold standard. And um, and the growth is between 10 to, to 16 weeks, so so it's quite long. And the rise of, um, of real-time PCR is, um, is coming as well. It's, it's, it's a more rapid, it's a more sensitive uh, de uh, detection method. And the actual detection is uh, for insertion sequence 900, it's IS-900. And um, it's actually unique to MAP. And um, it has about like 14 to, uh, to 20 copies um, in the MAP genome. And, and therefore, it's a very useful um, target for, for detection. And for MAP-K10, it, ha it has uh, 17 copies in the genome. Uh, the thing is, um, the DNA extractions are needed uh, if you want to use PCR or, or real-time PCR. So MAP DNA extractions, um, it's kind of difficult because it's, um, it's a MAP has a, a thick, waxy cell wall. And DNA extraction from fecal material, the downside is like it will actually yield PCR inhibitors as well. And these PCR inhibitors will cause false negative uh, detection results. Uh, to, actually com uh, to combat that one, we actually need internal controls to actually eliminate these um, false negative fecal results. Um, so internal controls, um, they're actually added to the PCR uh, reaction itself currently. And most of them are actually plasmid-based. Uh, some are actually using housekeeping genes or other ones are actually using the DNA itself into the fecal sample and they actually do the extraction. So on the table, uh, where you see over there, it's just a common kind of table. So if your internal control for your PCR is positive, your fecal sample is, comes up positive for any target that you want to uh, screen for. So MAP is, is actually present in, in, in the sample. Um, if your internal control is negative and your fecal sample is negative as well, so then you have to repeat this, uh, this reaction or, or, you, or you repeat the PCR or you actually repeat the fecal um, DNA extraction. And the other one is like if your internal control is positive and your fecal sample is negative, then most often the, um, uh, the MAP is, uh, is negative as well. And, but what happens if, if you look at the DNA extraction method of choice that, um, that you do? So in the first, in the first instance, it's, it's positive, it's, it's perfect though, but in, 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 the, latter, uh, in, the, nec in the next one, um, you actually don't know if the PCR is inhibited or, or your DNA extraction is, is poorly, um, poorly executed. And in the last one, um, because the fecal sample is negative and the PCR uh, internal control is positive, it will actually tell you for that, um, extra, uh, for that um, PCR reaction that the inhibitors are, are fine, but it doesn't tell you if your DNA um, extraction worked or that actually MAP, um, the MAP cells are being lysed uh, efficiently. So a DNA extraction internal control is actually very beneficial to determine if MAP cells are successfully lysed and for, of your, um, for your detection, uh, uh, for your DNA extraction method of choice. So in, in my case, um, it's the, uh, we're gonna use the Mycobacterium smegmatis. It's a non-pathogenic, it's a very fast growing organism. So it actually grows in two or three days, so that's, that's quite uh, handy. Uh, it actually shares the same cell wall um, similarities as, as MAP and, and other species, uh, other mycobacterium species. So it, therefore, it's uh, an ideal model. So my aim of the study is actually to, um, to develop a specific MAP DNA extraction and real-time PCR uh, internal control uh, from a fecal environment by using the, the, the smegmatis as, um, as a molecular internal control. Uh, and this is to determine um, uh, to actually uh, to eliminate false negative results due to uh, inefficient MAP uh, cell lysis. And most important, thi most important thing is, is that um, we actually use the same primer set and the same uh, PCR conditions to actually amplify two targets in the same PCR reaction. 
So just um, so like uh, it, it's quick um, internal control overview. So what I've done is uh, I picked I picked the ampicillin gene over here. Um, I used two cloning and uh, two cloning primers over here, and I actually attached the uh, IS900 over here in the, in the green. And, and and the reason why I picked the uh, ampicillin gene is just for for a non-relevant uh, gene. So it's in, it's the in internal fragment, so ampicillin doesn't work. I, I tested the uh, IS900 primers on the POC19 vector, and I actually didn't see any products. So then we actually cloned um, this internal con uh, internal control into uh, the PMV261 uh, vector. That's a uh, very handy uh, uh, E. coli uh, E. coli mycobacterium shovel vector. And transformations were done in Smegmatis. And as you can see over there, the, um, the, the PCR confirmation of these clones are done by using the uh, IS900 primers. And and successful clones are actually spiked in fecal material of, uh, of one gram. And, yeah, um, and the DNA extractions are done by, um, by using the Detro core kit, and the RT-PCR ana analysis are done, is done by the, the LC96 uh, from Rush. So first of all, it's kind of like dry swimming that we did. So we, a we actually did it first um, on DNA to see the, the detection sensitivity. And as you can see in lane, lane 8, it's, uh, it's about 4 fem femtogram for both of them. And, and if you look at the, the melting curve analysis as well, the most important thing is, is for, for the IS900, uh, it's about 90 degrees. And for my internal control, that's about uh, 86.5 degrees. So if you just pay attention to those curves. And so what I've done as well, uh, I've actually done a series of dilutions of the same kind of DNA and I actually combined them together. And as you can see over there, it's still the, the actual detections um, Sensitivity is still four phantom gram, and but what you see over here is that the in, that the melt curve peaks for for me for IS900 is actually very nicely defined, but my internal control peaks are not um, hardly uh, defined, except for lane 10 you can see two nice peaks, and then lane L, uh, 11 you can see two nice peaks as well, and. The next thing that we did as well is uh, we actually did a serial dilution as well, but I actually um, did a, a tenfold higher concentration of DNA for from internal control, and and as you can see as well, the peaks from internal control are actually much more defined than than the previous one, and so we actually did the same thing, but then in fecal material, so. As you can see as well, the, the actual detection sensitivity is actually uh, 10 to the 2 colonies uh, from a unit per gram um, for both. And, and if we do the same thing, we actually combine the actually two cell, cell cultures together, together in an equal amount, so 10 to the 8 for MAP uh, K10 and 10 to the 8 for, for my, um, for, my uh, for, for smack maps internal control. And then you can see that the, the actual detection sensitivity detection sensitivity is still um, 10 to the 2. And, but the problem that we have, again, is that the melt curve peaks from internal control are not actually uh, defined, except lane, lane 10. And so we did the same thing as well that we, um, um, I actually did a tenfold high concentration of my internal control um, compared to the, to the map K10. And, the most important thing is that the detection sensitivity dropped from 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 3. Um, but on the other hand, my, my melt curve peaks came up for, for my uh, internal control. But the most important thing is that the, de uh, that the detection sensitivity dropped. Um, so if we have an, un an unknown sample, uh, an unknown fecal sample, how much of, the, of my smack matter should I, uh, should I add to get a nice result? So what I've done is like I actually did this, uh, the same um, serial dilution for for map K10, 10 to the 8, or 10 to the 1, and I actually kept uh, smack match internal control the same as um, 10 to the 2. And as you can see over here, uh, again the peaks kind of dropped as well for me internal control. But as you can see over here that all of these ones are nicely um, uh, nicely amplified, and then my internal internal control comes except for uh, for map K10, 10 to the 1 but everything kind of worked, the actual DNA extraction worked. Um, so the conclusions are like, um, I saw some of the detection sensitivity 
in FICO material is actually 10 to the 2 for, for actually both, um, for both internal control and MAP-K10. And, but this comes at the cost as, um, internal, um, as the melting curve peaks are, are, are undefined. And so if I, if I do a tenfold higher concentration of, of my internal control, the, the sensitivity for, uh, for, of a map um, dropped, and, but the actual melt curves are actually, um, actually more defined. So for unknown samples, uh, the, the best thing to, to add is, is, is a 10 to the 2 uh, concentration. And, um, and last but not least, like uh, this internal control could actually um, actually validate the uh, novel map DNA extraction methods in fecal material or other material, um, other environments such as blood or milk. Um, and actually, I want to thank these um, these people, uh, especially my two supervisors, and and also Stephen Corn for supplying the uh, the plasmid and my funding funding body. Um, thank you for listening. Many, many thanks, Marcel, for keeping good time. Good job. I'm sorry that I'm, uh, I've, given, I've been given strict instructions to keep to schedule. I'm sorry that the last two speakers before Marcel were unable to uh, get to questions. Does, Marcel, before you disappear, does anyone have any questions? Sorry. We do have the time, if anyone's interested. No. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Do you have any idea why the detection limit is at 10 to the 2 when there's 17 copies, so it's really 17 times 10 to the 2? Um, where, wh why can't we get better sensitivity? Um, well, I think it's, it's because it's in a, in a fecal environment, and um, especially 10 to the 2, it's about, it's about 100 well, like cells that go in. And um, yeah, I think like in in in, in yeah in, in the actual fecal material, there are still some PCR inhibitors that are just um, actually causing okay. causing this. But, yeah. Are there any further questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Marcel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.